Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of my Java tutorial series. This time I've actually, I'm actually trying something new uh, because I've already written all the classes uh, that we're going to use. Hopefully that will make things just a little bit quicker and uh, if you like it, please let me know. If, if not, I'll go back to writing it out as you guys watch. But today I thought I was going to cover inheritance in Java, which is one of the key features of an object-oriented programming language, um, which Java is. So let's uh, take a look at our classes. I've written a class animal um, in that's uh, right over here and uh, the animal class has a public constructor that takes in an argument of a string that's gonna be the name of the animal because in my model all animals do have a name um, and we'll save the name variable to the local variable here and we have a basic method of get name which returns the name of course um, if this is new to you, then I uh, suggest you watch the last episode, episode 5, which I cover uh, the basics of this, so this shouldn't be new to you. And um, I have a method called number of legs, and we'll get back to that one uh, later. Uh, and by default, all animals have zero legs, and that doesn't make any sense yet, but we'll get, get into that later. Let's just test our classes, uh, or my animal class. So, uh, just like the last episode, we'll have animal. Uh, animal is equal to new animal. And all my animals must have a name uh, in my model, so we'll call it Fido, uh, like the dog we used in the last episode. And now we can uh, print animal dot get name and this will print out hopefully it, this will print out the name of the animal which is Fido so let's try this java main dot java and run that command and it compiled and java main and we get Fido which is exactly what we expected to get let's uh, extend our model a bit and uh, we introduce the dog class which extends the animal class which means that dog in this case is a subclass of animal and animal is the super class of dog and this constructor right here uh, is just a uh, like in any other constructor it takes in a name parameter and we call the super function or super constructor and the super constructor is this case in this case is the constructor of the animal class which is this one so basically what we are doing here is when we create a new dog and pass in a name we pass it further into the animal class here and it's stored here and we can use the get name function on the dog even though as you can clearly see the dog does not have any get name function and I'll show you right now let's just copy all this and write it out once more and we'll change animal with dog Oops. and we'll have Goofy as our dog and remember to change here as well so these two codes do the exact same thing uh, except for the name of course but other than that it's the exact same thing and I'll show you right now Java and Java main and we print out Fido and Goofy great so clearly the uh, animal class handles the name or get name function uh, for dog so that means we don't need to type it out 
several times. Let's say we're going to have a dog and we're going to have a bird, which is the exact same thing as a as a dog is an animal and it extends an animal and it it uses the constructor in the same way. And um, we can show that a bird will do the exact same thing. So let's try that bird 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 and we'll call our bird Polly and bird alright so let's run and we'll get Fido, Goofy and Polly you get the idea by now even though the dog class does not contain a get name function and the bird class does not contain a get name function we can still use the get name function of the animal class because it's a super class of both dog and bird great and as we can see uh, dog has a function by itself uh, called bark and the animal class does not have bark so because obviously not all animals bark so which means that animal dot bark is not valid because the animal class does not contain the bark function dog dot bark oops not break bark is however valid because the dog class does contain the bark function and of course bird does not contain the bark fu uh, function it rather contains the fly function so bird dot bark is not valid but bird dot fly is valid and we can see goofy is barking and Polly is flying great now for overriding methods um, as we saw in animal we can see that it has a function called number of legs or num of legs which doesn't always make any sense that the animal has zero legs because a, a dog in my model always has four legs and a bird always has two legs so if we now print uh, dog dot num of legs what will actually be printed let's check our dog class and as you can see here I've overridden the num of legs which means that it says that this function does exist in animal but I'm not happy with the way it's defined so I'll redefine it over here and return for instead that's basically what I say so whenever I get dog when this object is a dog it will return for and for bird I've done the exact same just return to instead so whenever this is a bird it will return to whenever it's an animal that is has not overridden that function it will return zero and when it's yeah when it's a dog it will return four and when it's a bird it will return two so let's try and comment out uh, in bird so this does not exist now so dog dot num legs and bird dot num legs and uh, what do we get compile and run and as you can see the dog overrides the method returns 4 bird does not override the method and returns 0 and if we uncomment this it will return 2 and it will return 2 all right. Um, the last thing that we that's great with with inheritance is the uh, 
type of uh, containers that we can use. Um, now, since dog is an animal and bird is an animal, we can use a animal variable um, and we'll call it container. And that is equal to, let's put our dog in there. This is perfectly valid because it, the container variable expects an animal. The dog is a dog, but a dog is also an animal, so this is perfectly valid. Now, we can use the we can container dot num of legs. What do you think? Oops, we'll print it out actually. What do you think will actually be printed out here? Will it print zero? Or will it print four? And the answer might actually surprise you. Let's try and run it and just see for ourselves how how this goes. And it returns four. Why does it return four? It clearly says when it's an animal, return zero. That is because at runtime, our dog is actually a dog. And because it's a dog, then it goes into this class first and it says oh override the number of legs method and return four and it does great exactly what we want but if we now have a dog that means it can bark right so if we do container dot bark what will happen now let's let's see we get a compile error because animal does not contain the bark method. It doesn't exist in animal. It only exists in the dog class. So how do we solve this? Because we know that the container contains a dog, but the bark function is not valid. And clearly it uses the dog class here to get the number of legs. What we actually can do now is we can use what's called a cast. We'll say, all right, I know this container is an animal, but I know for sure that what I put in that container is a dog. So what we use is the parentheses and dog. And we'll actually need, <clears throat> we'll actually need parentheses all around this. So we'll say, the container is of type dog. Now dog.bark is valid. And uh, run. And Goofy is barking. Great. So that's a simple cast to the type. Because we know it's a dog, this is valid. If we change this to bird, we'll get errors. And I'll show you that as well. And run and it's ex an exception on the main thread cast exception bird cannot be cast to dog because we are casting the bird to a dog because a bird is obviously not a dog uh, so this doesn't make any sense for the compiler or as at, at runtime of course it to the compiler this is perfectly valid because we can in theory cast an animal to a dog but that, then we have to make sure that this is actually a dog and not a bird. So that's been the basics of inheritance in Java. And I hope it made some sense to you because this is a very important when we go on to Android programming very, very soon. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll answer as much as I can. Uh, if not, then I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye!